Welcome to a new game of Civilization V. And since I last played this game, I have gotten a bunch of new DLC. In fact, I have gotten every DLC there was. Yay, Steam Winter Sale! So, I am now playing as Babylon, which is a new civilization. And my special ability is that I both earn great scientists twice as fast, and once I research writing, I get an automatic great scientist. So obviously, I'm going to be focused fairly heavily on science. Now, presumably, I'll go for a science victory in the end, but who knows? Science helps with pretty much everything. And man, is this start amazing. I start coastal, two luxury resources right next to me, jungle terrain nearby, mountains for within two tiles for an observa observatory, and to top it on, all off, there's an ancient ruin right next to me. That is the best start I've ever seen, I think. I've never see started adjacent to an ancient ruin. Ruin. That is really cool. So I think it makes sense to go for writing first, because I usually do that anyways, and with the extra great scientist I get, like, there's almost no reason not to. Makes an awful lot of sense. Oh, and I have truffles. Wow. So that's four luxury resources within three tiles. Um, apparently, I did not realize that you automatically get ancient ruins within your borders. So that was a bit of a waste. I should have moved here. Could have explored more territory. Thought I had to pick it up with my warrior, but apparently not. Move over. Wow, another ruin. That's excellent. What did I even get from the first one? I did not pay any attention at all. Um, what well, looks different? Uh, I have no idea, but presumably it was something good. Probably a bit of money or something. I think I have more than I usually start out with. Excellent advanced weapons. Oh, and this is the end of the world, it looks like. In fact, I am playing on Earth map mode, so this looks like it... I think this is South America. Might be Africa, but I think it's too narrow. So, down here should be the... Although, I suppose it might be, like, eight, somewhere in Asia. It can't be India, but maybe, like, Southeastern Asia? Too skinny for India. I think. I'm not entirely sure what the scale is on the Earth map. Oh, maybe this is Central America. Actually, yeah, that would make more sense. Isthmus of Pan Panama right here. I'm not sure. Like, is it just the borders of land versus water? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> um, is it just the borders of land versus water that's controlled by the Earth? map mode, or is it all terrain? Yeah, so this, since this is the south, this is Antarctica, so then that must mean that I'm in Shall South America, because nowhere else reaches that far south, as far as I know. Not in this shape. Because this definitely is not Australia. I don't have any wheat, bananas, or deer, unfortunately. As far as I know, at least. There might be one here, but doubtful, because it looks like it's plains. I think those usually show up on forest or grasslands. So rather than building a granary, I'm going to go for a scout. Especially because there's so much rough terrain around this area. So there's a lot of... Um, so the scout special ability of skipping over rough terrain would be particularly useful. And I don't actually have a second two-food tile to start out with. Oh, now I do. It's a bit unusual. But yeah, I do like getting more food in the early game. It pays for itself pretty quickly, as long as you have the happiness, which I do. And... Move here, because it's efficient. And you get slightly more vision. I suppose I could go to the left a little bit and see around there, but since I can't, since I would only get vision, I wouldn't actually be able to move there. I would only get vision on like one or two tiles, not really worth it. Excellent. So now I get to decide my policy. 
So generally tradition and liberty are the best first policies, and tradition is definitely better if you want to go only one city. Um, but I feel like I almost never expand in the early game, so to try to force myself to do something different than I normally do, I'm going to go liberty. And I may go for collective rule as quickly as I can. Because getting a second city without having to spend 15 turns building a settler would be quite useful. Especially in the early game. Discovered some barbarians and more ruins. Wow. They're all over the place. This ancient civilization is just littered everywhere. Um, I think... A granary does give two food, and obviously I don't need, like, more scouts or anything at this point. I could go for a shrine, but I think I would rather get food than faith. I mm, don't want to go for religion this game, I think. I did have an attempted last game where I played as... Um, Byzantium, so teach us nice. and I did go for religion, and that recording unfortunately messed up, so you guys won't be seeing that. So, don't want to do the same thing twice in a row, even though it wouldn't be twice in a row for you, so I'm basically just teasing you with the knowledge of a secret video which was lost to you forever. <laughs> so cool. That was probably suicidal. Yes, it was. Why did they do that? They hardly even did any damage, let alone killed me. Looks like there's nobody around here for a while. Yeah, so this is definitely South America at this point. Like, this is Brazil. I'm, I think, in southern Brazil. Yeah. Don't know my South American geography as well as I probably should. Um, let's see. Peru's over here. I think Chile is... Slightly to the. He who I destroys know, a good book. I think it's adjacent reason, to it's Peru, but I can't remember on which side. And so I got my free great scientist. Absolutely amazing. Um, academies will connect strategic resources on tiles. I have made the mistake of placing them on a luxury resource. Don't do that. It just shuts down the tile forever, and you can't work. You can't get the luxury resource anymore. So just don't. Um, I think I would rather get more food in the early game. So as soon as I get this tile, I think I want to put my academy there rather than on, say, here. Although this is grassland. And let me see. I think the great tile improvements remove forest. Um... Uh, what? There, why is there no... Okay. Why is there no... Sibylopedia thing for that? Um... Yeah, so it looks like it removes... Since it doesn't say that it can be built on forest, I think it removes forest, which would change this forest from one food, one production, into two food, which would actually be preferable. So I think I'm going to do that. Still haven't encountered anybody, that's pretty good. Because less competition for the next spot. I already have calendar, which I usually take directly after writing. So I'm not entirely sure where I want to go next. I do have liberty, so maybe I should get the pyramids. Although I, my special unit is a bowman. Which is kind of unfortunate to have an early game special unit, because that's not really as useful as a late game special unit. Although, I think like, four out of five civilizations have special units are in like, ancient, classical, or medieval era or something, so... Oh! Ooh, interesting. You actually need the technology for this, because it counts as clearing the forest. I did not know that. Well, in that case, I am going for mining anyways, which is what lets me chop down a forest. So, rather than build it on a mine, in, or a, on a mine, on a hill where I would have to forego food 
to work it. I think I'm just going to wait the five turns out. So you can sleep a while. You stay here. Don't attack over river and into that. Because that would be a really bad move. Um, but it looks like there's nothing really around here. This would probably be a good place to put down a second settlement. Because um, dyes and wine and sugar... Although I suppose I already have wine, so that doesn't really matter. But the three sugar and dyes. Diamond is already within my sphere of influence. Maybe I should just heal up. Yeah, that seems fine. Great, Malacca. I'm the first one they've met, so I get more money. Woohoo! It also has tons of jungle, which means that once I get to a university, all of those tiles will give me plus two science. Although I will have trouble with production, because the only hill tile nearby are, like, this one and this one. And I guess maybe this one, depending on where exactly I settle. Wow, I have gotten so many in, um, ancient ruins and almost none of them have been useful. I got like a map or something early on and that now I got a barbarian encampment. I mean, the technology was certainly very good, but not the other ones. Plus one production in every city, that's good early on, and plus 5% when constructing buildings, which I'm going to be doing a lot, because, I don't know, do wonders count as buildings? Um, looks like no. Interesting. Because, I mean, they are, but <laughs> I guess wonders, units, buildings are the three t categories, so even, there's no such thing as a subcategory. Malacca, you're about 3,000 miles too far east, I believe. Um, Marsh actually gives a defensive penalty, so I don't want to move there. Although he would have to attack across the river, which would mostly... Actually, I think it would entirely negate the Marsh penalty, but if I'm here, he still has to attack into um, harsh terrain, so or rough terrain, so... That's fine either way. Somebody already has a pantheon. Wow. That's quite quick. I wonder if it's a civilization that has some bonus to faith production. They're ganging up on me. <laughs> I have the pointiest sticks, even though I didn't... Well, I suppose I did build one unit, but that was a... Um, it was a scout, so... Not exactly military. And Ooh, interesting. I can't actually get off of South America until it looks like... Ooh, ivory. Um, hmm. Can't get out of here until I research embarkation. So in that case, I'll probably want to go for optics after I'm done with masonry. Is there anything that particularly leaps out? Um, I might want to real reveal horses, but they're not that important. I think horses give, like, plus one production just for having them on a tile. Yeah, um, so it would give me slightly higher production. I can build you now, Rene Descartes. So, move. I get slightly less production, but more food and a lot more science, so that's good. And wow, that halved my the time to get masonry. Actually, my fraps counter is right over my science, so I can't tell what it says if, unless I mouse over it. Whoops. I'll have to fix that at some point. So, since you can't get around here and you can't embark yet... Wait, what? How does... Oh, because it's fog of war, it just assumes that it's land. Because otherwise it would tell you whether it's land or not, so... Um, but it's not actually land, it's most likely, in fact, almost certainly, it water. Because, that, I mean, aside from just knowing the geography, it clearly looks like that goes in. So, just a little confused there. 
You know, I probably shouldn't destroy this until both of my units have leveled up completely, because it is the only barbarian encampment in this area, and I don't have anything else to scout or anything. So there's really no point in destroying it. I mean, I get the money now rather than later, but it's a tiny bit of money. I'm not going to spend it yet anyways, so might as well just wait. And you hopefully move in here, because that'll get 15% attack bonus against you. Yay! You're stupid. How happy are those awesome. Oh yeah, my other special ability, lives. Walls of Babylon, which are roughly one and a half twice as strong as normal walls, and I think they take the same amount of time to build. Wow. So my scout is just that much weaker that even with a 50% bonus and a minus 15% penalty on his side, we still have about the same strength. Well, I guess it makes sense. A scout isn't exactly a combat unit. So I have tons and tons of science, but no production whatsoever, basically. Um, scouts actually, I think, have some of the best in, um, experience, or the best improvements, what do you call them? Level upgrade thingies in the game. Because they can get the survivalism thing, which gives them um, extra healing, or they can get extra vision range, both of which are amazing. I don't really want to move into the marsh myself. If I move here, and then tank up on my scout, I should be able to survive, and even if all three of them attack me, which is doubtful, I should be able to just barely survive, and then I can run away over here because my scout's faster than his barbarians. If worst comes to worst, and he, like, moves here, which would give me zone of control here, I can attack and then run away. Ooh, maybe I overestimated the strength of my scout. Yeah, I think I did. Whoops. Okay, please don't attack. Darn. Although he is really weak too. Yes! One health left. Oh, that's amazing. I love this. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> because two units cannot kill each other, ever. So, since his barbarian was really low on health, even though my, so my scout was two, since my scout won, it had to survive with one HP. Um, survivalism would definitely be more useful in the short term, but scouting would help me with what the scout is actually designed for, so I think I'm going to take that. And you can just run away over here, and nobody can reach you, because they have to go through rough terrain. So that worked out fantastically. And you're already almost halfway to the, um... Actually, more than halfway to level 2. Although, I suppose if you count the difference between level 1 and 2, then it's slightly less than halfway, if you want to be technical about it. Don't know why I just came up with that technicality and then, like, made it sound like you, the viewer, were the one who suggested it, but whatever. Um, so I already have that. In fact, I'm probably going to get... Well, yeah, I am going to get optics quite soon, so I want to get my scout leveled up completely pretty quickly. It looks like this barbarian is coming around to attack my scout. I hope he is, because he would take massive penalties for attacking over river and into um, rough terrain. Looks like he's smarter than that, unfortunately, so I don't want to attack over river either. If I move here, only one Barbarian can attack me, but I won't be able to fortify. So... I think it's just a little bit too dangerous for me. If I move here, only the weakened Barbarian can attack me. So I can, like, move in and fortify. And I don't get to heal because I moved a little bit, but... It, at least if he attacks, he gets an attack penalty. Yeah, he attacked. Good, that's five more XP. And I don't think I'll die. Nope. 
protect him at all costs. This is slight penalty for attacking over river, but I do get the terrain buff bonus for attacking into marsh, so that's fine. I've never actually paid attention to that before, that um, you get a penalty for defending in a marsh. I always thought that it was just rough terrain, and so you got automatic um, bonus, but I learned a couple minutes ago, well, a couple days ago, rather. I don't know why I said minutes. Yay, scout! Oh, no, spearman. Never mind. You're useless to me. Kind of cool, but it has to be said. No, he's not actually useless, because um, he may not be able to scout as well as the scout, but he can take out this barbarian encampment, which my scout wouldn't be able to do in a million years, so that's at least as useful. Made an instrument okay, so now I can embark, which means I can continue exploring. Welcome. Unfortunately... I do have to go inside of Friendly Terrain's borders to do that. Although, actually, I'm bringing a settler up here. I don't need to go back to Friendly Terrain. Friendly Terrain will come to me. And now I can reveal horses. Man, so much science. I've never experienced this power. Um, I've never had this much science this early in the game. It's really, really cool. Seems slightly overpowered, actually. I wonder... Because, I mean, I don't get any bonuses in the late game, so I wonder if it'll, like, end up being really, really weak or something. But it seems like this should sort of snowball. Maybe not. And try not to get hit by this archer. I shouldn't actually be able to, um... Well, he shouldn't be able to capture me because he would have to move through rough terrain. But he can at least shoot me. Okay, I'm back. My sister walked in here and tried to mess me up while I was recording, but ha! I showed her. Um, so yeah, I could move- I think I can just leave him here. I don't want to move him closer, though, because even though your or your ranged units aren't able to capture civilians, the um, barbarian ranged units are, so. Thou shalt not muzzle the- this is kind of annoying, because this archer can shoot me down faster than I can recover. So, I could... If I run away over here, no one should be able to attack me. It's dangerous, though, because if I fail in the attack, then I'll have nowhere to go. So I think I'm going to attack with my scout first, because if he loses, like he did... Um, well, not loses, but didn't succeed in killing him then there's no way I can possibly lose this, and it would be hilarious if I did. So, <laughs> I'm fine with that result. <laughs> Animal husbandry already. Um, I think I want to be able to see iron, and man, I wish I could get my settler up there somehow. But both of my units are really low on health, so that would not be good idea. Oh, good. They're retreating. He's retreating. Um, scouting two again. Well, <laughs> scouting again. And if I move here, neither unit can take me. Take my settler. You can take our lives, but you can't take our settlers! So, where exactly do I want to settle? I would like to get both the ivory... Well, I would like to get the ivory, because I already have this wine. I was thinking at first that I wanted both, but A, I think that's impossible, and B... Oh no, it's not impossible, but B, I already have wine. And if I settle right here, which is two tiles away from the ivory, one tile away from the dye, and one tile away from the sugar, it has access to two different hills, a lot of jungle, a third hill, and mountains for, like, observatories and Machu Picchu, um, so it would be a fairly good, um, location. It's even within three, oh no, it's within four tiles of this sugar, so I'll be able to get it eventually, just not very quickly. 
And as long as this barbarian doesn't move here or here or spawn a barbarian in one of those tiles, good. So he cannot capture my settler, because I can move here, can't capture me, and then I win. Because next turn I can just settle. Out of court. Um, and if I can get you guys back into friendly terrain, that would be good, because they heal twice as quickly. 20 HP per turn. Well, it's not actually twice. They heal an extra 10 hit points per turn. It can matter if you have a, like, scout with um, additional healing or something. So, but aside from that, most of the time it doesn't matter. And, ooh, that's right. I can make ranged attacks on this barbarian encampment with my city. And since both of my units are already at 30 experience, they can't get any more from barbarians. So it doesn't matter that they're not getting um, experience from the attack. And now I'm unhappy, so I guess I'll have to figure out how to deal with that in the next episode. Thank you all for watching, and see you next video. Bye!